Their dreams are frustrated and shattered as their children go into addiction. And some of them not only get into addiction, they get frustrated to the level they commit suicide. The level of suicide that is in our universities is unacceptable and I'm coming to tell you there is a future and there is no need of you killing yourself. I remember when I was in the university, uh, Kenyatta University, I contemplated the same. Now you can tell, had I done it then, I would not be here. Things were very tough and something had happened in the background at home and I thought because my mother was in such problems. And it was nothing very big, actually, not, not very big things that make people contemplate suicide. I had gone to and gotten my self-allowance from the university, and because I loved my mother and she had done so much to get me to the university, I decided to buy her a gas cooker and to move her to a good house and to buy her a wardrobe and all those things that would make her feel that I appreciated her. And unfortunately, the same gas cooker which I had bought, it exploded and some neighbors got burnt and they were blaming my mother. So I wondered why was I doing all these things? And because I loved my mother, I wanted to kill myself for that reason. But you can see God kept me and I'm here to as a testimony that you don't have to die, maybe your destiny which God has for you is so big and Satan will always bring his agenda and try to block you from your destiny. So let me say anything can happen, small things, details which maybe if you are not talking to your friend, you are not talking to someone, you can contemplate to do the wrong thing. And it is only because God was on my side that I'm here. And I have come to speak to you because I know poverty cannot stop you from getting to the level you want to go. I have come from a background, and those of you who follow me, you know I lived in a ghetto in Kiandutu. And I testify this because it's the truth. The other day I was there. And I was telling people because they, when we say this, people start commenting social media. They say everyone who rises, they say they want to associate with bad background. That is a bad, it was bad, it was bad history. Nobody would want to speak about this. But I speak to you because I know some of you may be going through what I was going through. I came from ghetto in Thika. It's called Kiandu to go there. It is still there. I went to Mogumoine Primary School. I went there even without shoes. There was a time diggers were <laughs> just my friends. And I seen my clothes. They were there accompanying me. And they were bad because <laughs> when I look at you, you, you look very clean and well. And I, I, anybody looking at you, you look like you're actually working. If I compare myself, even when I was going to Alliance, <laughs> we didn't have shoes. My clothes were torn. In fact, I didn't have even uni a uniform. But here I am. God can change things. <laughs> Those who have known bed bugs, try them. They are bad. They don't let you even sleep. They bite you, they leave a smell, and even they leave a swelling. So poverty cannot stop anyone from climbing to the next level. The background you come from, the ones who gave birth to you, where you are born, the location, it doesn't matter. That is not where your destiny is. That was a vehicle, and the location God dropped you. From there, you must work, and work very hard. Focus, believe in yourself, believe in God, and you will make it. The scourge of drugs addiction has taken root in our society, particularly among our youth. This alarming trend is eroding 
the lives and prospects of our young people and the societal impact of addiction to drug-related crimes is undeniable. As a mother who deeply cares about the well-being of the youth, I stand here to sound a cautionary note about the dangers of drugs and to urge you to steer clear out of them. I also caution on the danger of the triple threat, the new HIV infections among adolescents and the youth, which is actually rising. Teenage pregnancy and gender-based violence, the three are closely related. Take care of yourselves. I urge you to remain focused and determined in your studies. I know that sometimes the education journey can be tough, but never give up on your dreams. Remember, you, you hold the power to shape the future of Kenya and the world. I'm particularly concerned about the boy child. Boys are fathers, they are leaders, they are priests of homes, they are husbands to people, and therefore our society must start to take care of the boy child. I know my girl now is starting to feel a little jealous, but I am advocating this for your sake. They are the leaders in our homes and they need to be prepared to take care of the challenges that will come their way. We must provide them with the opportunities to grow into strong, responsible and productive members of our society who can make sober decisions that bring up strong and stable families. I call on each one of us to unite in our pursuit of dignified future for ourselves and for the generations to come. Let us use the talents, education, and the skills to build a prosperous and inclusive society that cares for the widows, it cares for the orphans, and people who are differently abled. I remain optimistic that through the collaboration and effort of all stakeholders, we will continue to transform Kenya into a better place for all citizens. I just want to conclude by asking you 